Uh, this is the uh, NEFIO SDK meeting on February 13th, 2024. Okay. Um, before we get started, anyone has any other agenda items that they want to discuss? Okay, cool. You guys can see my screen, right? Oh, Windows. I'm assuming yes, that's it. Can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. I was waiting for so, the unmute button. Yeah. <laughs> I was searching the unmute. <laughs> okay, so um, obviously no one volunteered <laughs> from last week. Um, so the, the, the first order of business, obviously, is uh, hopefully uh, some folks would be interested. To um, to get the to, to get the pieces to get some of the items, uh, some of the things that that I moved, uh, I took this guy out of R three because what we're asking is there's there's no clear use case at this point, um, so you know it's pretty low priority. It may it may even be detached from this because this is R three, but anyway, so that's one, uh, and another one is I added this, which is the. Um, you want to get the so again l3 we're looking for helm onboarding so the idea is to generate the values.yaml uh, to be fed into whatever helm execution engine we're using and um and then last week the the community is very strong on making sure that uh, we we can find a way to do this without uh, requiring coding which which is great um and so i i put that in as one of the tasks i actually spent about an hour or two last night looking at crossplane, which was suggested by Vim. Um, it wasn't obvious to me. Uh, it hasn't. It's still not very obvious to me that uh, how how that could be done by crossplane, which is basically a KCC like thing. They're they they're taking a CLD northbound and 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 map it into some sort of some sort of API um, on on the on by different providers. Um, I know there's a natural translation logic, transformation logic. Um, they also want to map your execution, your provider execution APIs and things into a Kubernetes object, that are managed objects that they call it. Um, but then it, it wasn't, to me, it isn't too trivial, um, even if we are leveraging that. Let's, let's say, for example, we write a Nephew provider um, that actually does values that YAML generation. This is our config map or some other, other, other types of objects. This is still not, I, I don't know if it's like user friendly per se. So, I mean, this. And I'm, I'm open for folks to explore. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting that in as a task. Um, but then I haven't done anything in terms of like do, actually doing the work. So I don't want to say yes or no, uh, or, or you know, it's not me to say yes or no anyway. Um, I, I, I do want to explore ways to do that. And then, because it's definitely cool to, to, to not asking people to compile just the business logic mapping of, of NF deployment plus your vendor extension into a values.yaml. Um, that that seems like something that you should be able to do like statically, um, something something simplistic like GVK, GVK or NF deployment plus GVK, and then and, and submit to another GVK, um, and then and then there's, we can write something that to actually do that mapping. Um, so I I have yeah. a thought about that. Um, mm -hmm. there, there's you know you can take a, a values.yaml and just turn it into a CRD, right? A bunch of properties, right? Yeah, That's kind of right, the right. thought. But then the mm -hmm. question is, okay, how do you fill them all? And mm -hmm. um, one, I, I think there are two ways to consider here. One is uh, pushing it, right? Which is how we do it right now. You would have some sort of cat function that generates that, right? Mm -hmm. And takes whatever it needs from the various inputs that it has from our normal models, right? Plus the extensions. Another approach that I've used in two places is a pull model. That is, um, you have some expression language built in, right? So when you create the CR, rather than just give it values, you give it some sort of expression that takes that value from somewhere else. And now kept supports it, right? Right, kept allows internal support for, for functions in some cases. <laughs> um, there's kind of a, a, the general 
sorry, not not kept. I meant customized, right? Yeah, <laughs> kept, okay. kept actually Custom was designed yeah, to sorry. take the core yeah, out yeah, of yeah. it. <laughs> customized with a K, yeah. It kept is uh -huh. the first example. This is the second example. So mm -hmm. customized with a K is very much based on that, right? It uses the uh, a Go expression language that's used a lot actually in Kubernetes. And uh, yeah, there, it, it could be a combination of both, right? So you're basically it's asking the developers to write the mapping into express, expressive language. And then and then we we just kind of involve customize and, and, and generates the value by YAML. No, no, I'm not saying use customize. No, I'm mm -hmm. saying just uh -huh. use if if we bake it into as a feature <laughs> of Nephio mm -hmm. somewhere, right? And specialization, right? So it could have it could be actually a kept function that evaluates these expressions, <laughs> right? So the point is that when when you write that uh, CR and include it in a package, um you don't have to rely on cat functions to do everything because that's kind of mysterious. You don't see it. That's inside the Go code somewhere. You mm -hmm. can actually express it right there in the text, right, through special strings that have these curly brackets, right? If you use customize, you know how it looks. Um, so there's there would, could be a cat function that runs through that and evaluates those expressions uh, and pulling the data, right? So, so it's more, I think, expressive and part of the package itself and not something mysterious that's uh, hard-coded into Go code somewhere and you just assume it works. Um, and again, it could be a combination of both. There could be some aspects that are filled behind the scenes and some aspects that might be better exposed to the user, um, to the architect, sorry. Um, anyway, they, these are two thoughts. I can, I yeah, can yeah. flesh this out yeah. a little bit more. If yeah, yeah, that would be great to put on the issues because I wonder if this is simpler because now you're asking the the developers to to write a new language in a way <laughs> to uh to 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 show to tell what the mapping actually looks like yeah uh, which is fine i mean just want to get the vendor communities to see whether or not this is more user friendly uh well, i i have a poc for this already it's okay. part of a T -K tko poc so when when i show it i'll i'll that POC has so much stuff in it i basically threw in everything that i could think of to experiment with <laughs> into one place mm -hmm. So I can I can highlight that specifically maybe in a meeting here, you know, um, yeah. and and just demo it and show how that expression language works. I use it exactly for this purpose to pull things into Helm values. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll okay. show you. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So if yeah, can... I, I have something as well that I can show. It's, okay. it's similar to that. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we don't we don't have which I'm using for NF to infra by the way. So it's uh, okay. But it's. Yeah. I, so my thing is basically based on Terraform. Uh, so it's basically using Terraform uh, as uh, okay. because it's basically that. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, it um. sounds like for everything, Tal uh, uh, and uh, Vim always like they say we have an app for that. So the <laughs> well, uh, so Tal well, and Vim say we have a POC for that. <laughs> yeah. I can demo it right now if you want. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you yeah. want. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, uh, Vim and Tal. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well, when, but seriously, let's uh, maybe next SDK session we should both demo and, and just yeah. show. Uh, yeah, show yeah. No, because yeah, if it see, works, the then thing we is, can. Yeah. So, Go ahead. so the thing is, right now, I mean, I've okay, I'm almost right. No, it's still a bit of work, but I can do specialization without doing any code, basically. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> So you mean, you mean to say like without writing any function? I mean, you you have to write the mappings, right? But at yeah, the, the, the day, vendor, the, a... the business logic is from from the the developers, so they have to map the business logic. Uh, but then, yes, well, so then but the nice thing is also it's... Uh, which ones is it the architects or the programmers doing Go? The, so in this case, is when, well for us, no, for no, us in the case, case of vendors. Yeah. In yeah. this case, it's basically. I mean. What you do is you map uh, a value from the input to to somewhere, right? So it's kind of very simple, and you have uh, functions that. Uh, so I'm using cell uh, as uh, as a way yeah, to do it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> the thing is that you know those expression languages, as rich as they are, um, I, I don't think they'll they'll. I don't think they're good for all use cases, right? Because sometimes the values sure, of YAML versus the our CRDs have enormous gaps between them. It's not just mapping uh, individual or even calculating yeah. them in different ways. You you probably need a program and some business logic to do that, including, by the way, getting data from external sources, right? Not everything always could yeah. be available in the package. Um, I mean, what was it? Let's let's kick it off with something simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First. yeah. So the, the nice it's thing cool. with with the Terraform mm -hmm. logic is that you can even build these providers uh, that basically do that. So you and it's also support mixins and stuff like that. So it's actually 
I mean, there's still a bit of work to make this complete, but uh, there it has very nice properties. Yeah. Well, not nice to have that because I, I would like to avoid using crossplane. It looks very complicated. Perhaps yeah, crossplane. See, I pointed you okay. to that, uh, Stephen, because that's <laughs> something that is there, right? And is used. Yeah. yeah. No, no. I, I looked. It, it's the purpose wasn't that. So, so if you want to use it to do that, it's actually it, it looks very either a overkill or a little complicated. But yeah, yeah. I'm I'm glad you guys have solutions because that you know the, I mean, the crossplane. I'm, yeah. I'm very iffy on. Yeah. But good, sorry. Go ahead, Liam. So, yeah, yeah. Just um, uh, I guess it'd be great to see Tal and Henrik uh, get present here, and uh, uh, to, to get the status updates. Because the sooner we get that into, I know it's not really the topic of this meeting. The sooner we can get that into our tree, the better we have all of eyes on it. You know. Yeah. yeah. My plan was not for. Okay, we can. Uh, whether we can do it in our tree is a yeah, sure. different. Oh, okay. yeah. Okay, maybe. maybe <laughs> that, 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 that's fine too, him. Yeah. No. I think we first have to show what uh, what it can do, right? And then we can see how. To... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's 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 actually yeah. Uh, that, that sounds like a, a very good plan. Maybe, maybe we can do a park or something in our tree. Yeah, no. So yeah, so so logistic. I mean, before we go to the volunteers, <laughs> um, logistic. Uh, I think the community wants us to first build this end-to-end -end use case on PLT as a as a park. So we will. I'll, I'll after this meeting, uh, I'll create a. Um, with with Bala's permission, I'll I'll create a uh, uh, um, a repo uh, on uh, on Nephew Experimental, uh, and then we'll we'll do the first level integrations or at least up to ONE Summit, um, um, the our our integrations on the that repo first before moving into the Nephew SDK repo on uh, on Project Nephew Nephew that's project. <laughs> cool. The only thing that the the only thing that I wanted to say is that. Uh, I mean, my focus right now is 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 on the specialization side and enough to infra to leverage mm -hmm. this. Okay. So the the implementation to use it within a controller or just on a package is will be a bit different. I mean, there will be some subtleties uh, around mm -hmm. it because you have to mm -hmm. basically. I mean, I've actually I've worked on something before, but at the moment I'm focused really on running it within the package uh, stuff, right? And to mm -hmm. sort out all the dependencies and stuff like that. So, I, so I'm focused on that. So what I'm trying to say is that the consumption, right? So, so the, the syntax will be the same, mm -hmm. but the way you, so in the package, you actually just run it uh, as a pipeline, right? So you basically, mm -hmm. it, it runs independently here. You have to tie it to the watches uh, of the control runtime. So there is a bit yeah. of different work yeah. involved. Yeah. Uh, Mm -hmm. To uh, that, it's not a rocket science, but uh, mm -hmm. you actually are pretty deep. I, for people who are familiar, you are pretty deep into the. You need to go pretty deep into controller runtime code to understand how to do that. Mm -hmm. So, so one one thing uh, <clears throat> I wanted to say that now we are getting into the R three things. I know there is a lot of wish list coming from the uh, SIG architecture, which is obviously this is one of that right SDK, uh, SA, and observability and uh, RAM. I think these are the three major stories along with modeling. Uh, at the same time, uh, from a SIG automation perspective, like uh, uh, we have recognized at least two main things uh, so far, at least to my knowledge. One is uh, the NF2 infra that uh, you are bringing up, uh, uh, Vim, that is one thing. Probably that's kind of mm -hmm. a fundamental working piece. And also, Stephen, like we discussed yesterday, that uh, abstract model for uh, infrastructure. Yeah, the, the cluster. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, if, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm still at the point where I think we should, we should, Nephew should have something simpler instead of the full ORAN thing. But then, yeah. you know, we can talk about that on Slack. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> not, so what, whatever that is. So, what I'm saying mm -hmm. is probably we need to do those things as well. I okay. think probably these two, as we consider the main items, we should also include these two items for R3 because it's time at this point of time. We have mm -hmm. simplified the NF deployment in R2, probably it's time to simplify. The infrastructure, Some of the infra pieces. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think we should we should consider these as a high priority work streams for our two. Yeah, I can I I can take that one. I mean, yeah. if you have an issue, I can I, I can take that. So sure. thank you so much. Yeah, I think uh, we just want to make sure that uh, uh, when we go I mean, to the TSC, we also need to tell them. You know, along with yeah. this, we have these things also. Mm -hmm. cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, so Dad, so we will we will we'll be happily waiting for Tao and Vim to give us a demo next week. Until then, uh, let's hopefully folks are interested to do things. Um, 
the CLI, sorry to say that I, I haven't reached out to the operator SDK people. I can I can write out what I investigated on the Kube Builder. That's also based on operator SDK. Um, that the, the idea is you, you, so the reason why operator SDK wraps uh, Kube Builder is um, according to a blog, the, a blog that I, I was I was reading, um, is because the one of operator SDK's goal is to have something that gets started by Kube Builder, and then they can take over the same workspace, and then and then still use the same CLI syntax um, to continue. Like, like let's say you create an API on a <clears throat> on on a workspace that is actually built out by Kube Builder. Um, so so this is. Not necessarily a requirement for us, but it's kind of nice to have. Um, so if if we can do that on a Kube Builder, that's already a well known thing that we can kind of replicate from Operator SDK. If we want to leverage Operator SDK, um, I have to, I have not figured out how to do that yet. Um, but then the one major benefit, obviously, is you have um, you have uh, uh, the the OLM thing to to do lifecycle management of of, of operators uh, that you can just leverage, uh, and although you know, we have our lifecycle management from that field too. Um, and, and then B, uh, it has Ansible support, um, which again, there's no use case for it yet. So I don't want to say this is a hard requirement. Um, but in any case, the, the CLI uh, is something you should be able to leverage uh, from the framework. Kube Builder CLI is a, is a Go module that you can just use. Uh, and, um, and then, you know, at and, and because we need to allow vendors to add their own CLDs, um, and that's a that's a good starting point. There because the syntax would be very consistent across Kube Builder, Operator SDK, and uh, and Nephew SDK. So so that's the idea. But then you use you use the Kube Builder part. Um, correspondingly, you have to write quite a bit of code. <laughs> um, so so this is if you use if it, the decision is to do Kube Builder, then you do have to write some code. Um, so, um, and, and if anyone interested, <laughs> so so still, are, mm -hmm. we, are you are you making opinion here that we should? I, no, so I, I can write about what I investigated so far. Okay. Um, okay. and and I would encourage whoever wants to take on this to also reach out to operator SK. I, I haven't done it. Sorry about that. Last okay. up to last week, I was busy doing something else. Got it. Got it. So, um, so so obviously, as a red hat, I probably. We use Red Operator SDK here. That would be good. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's yeah. Uh, that's. No, no, that there there are benefits. I just want to see how easy it is on one side yes, versus the definitely. other. Definitely, the Ansible one I can definitely see for some of the infra pieces how that can be useful mm -hmm. uh, to write a simple Ansible operator. Uh, and uh, with that said, um, even I have not looked into this for a while now. Uh, mm -hmm. The I can bring. Uh, if you, if you think that's helpful, I also said the last time too, but I did not uh, follow up on that. But do you think, mm -hmm. uh, Stephen, that uh, should I bring somebody? Yeah, you know, yeah, that would be helpful. So we'll we'll know explicitly how do we how do we like replace Opera SDK with Nephew SDK, and still leverage the same syntax and structure, and then okay. allow us to add extensions. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so that was that's the only thing. Otherwise, to, if the core says Opera SDK, I have I, I I would be perfectly fine with that. Okay, um, cool. Just so Opera SDK's core is Kill Builder. Yes, Operate exactly. SDK's it's it's built on. Like, <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I, they're also perfectly fine with that too. So um, yeah, it's built would... on Kill Builder, and it gives us a it gives us a leverage with multiple options, such as mm -hmm. Ansible, like you said. Yeah. yeah. So, well, I'll, I'll talk to you know, it's, it's, and yeah, from from Ericsson. I, I think I would also be interested in chipping in on this one because okay. we I, I, we have been doing something similar, uh, talking, but it was based mainly on the operator SDK. It okay. was not fo focusing on the queue builder itself. So okay. if, if there's need for help in here, I would be happy to chip in. Oh, cool. Thanks. Thanks, Tajir. Yeah. The other thing yeah. is it has some some communities uh, uh, okay. around it for the, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so so at the very least, uh, Adishan, if you can uh, provide findings and things in the in the issue, that'd be great. Obviously, yeah. the, the, the really amazing thing would be just take the, <laughs> take the issues. <laughs> It would be would be great. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Again, I'm, it's up to you guys. <laughs> um, that's one. So great. Uh, so far, we have some directions on this. Um, I'm guessing whatever. So so Vim and, and Hal maybe correct me on this. I'm I'm guessing no matter what you do, on the, on the mapping, 
we still need some sort of dummy NF deployment reconciler, right? If you do the thing that I'm working on, not no. I mean, it will oh, really? be hidden. Okay. I mean, it will be created for you. I mean, it's okay. It so you you, you have something. Way. So so that's that's the thing. So so something needs to create something a, a reconciler that listens to uh, that 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 watches NF deployment. So so you're generating that. So, yeah. So so the way so. the way it works, the way this would work is what you do is you you basically have your business logic, if you will, right, which mm -hmm. is. A set of expressions, yeah. uh -huh. and you basically tie that to NF deployment, right? So basically, you say uh -huh. NF deployment does this, and the first thing it does, it it basically says, is uh, if provider is me, I will do the rest of the logic. If not, uh, uh, go to hell, right? I'm not do we, interested we, in do this. Do we? Here. Do we also? So one one possible use case that I could see, in addition to the mapping, uh, does it generate the code so that people can actually go in and change it to? Because more, a we want to make it easier, so majority of the use cases generates this and does. Yes. But then there's the cases where maybe some vendors will have to go in and say, "Oh, I would like to add some logic to the reconciler." So is the is the code? Let's say Go code. If is, is the Go code generated and sitting on the workspace, so people can actually go in and modify. It? I mean, if if you look how the 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 the, the reconciler code works under the hood of the operator SDK, right? So mm -hmm. you tie you're tied to a watch basically, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a watch of a specific uh, GVK, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, so that's your so you have a four, you have the own, and you have the watches itself, right? Each of mm -hmm. them are tied to a watch inside of the the Kubernetes logic. Mm -hmm. um, the way okay, the system that I'm working on works is that in order to reach out for so for example, sometimes you need to get access to additional resources within the cluster, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there is a provider plugin that takes care of that. I see. Okay, so that's nice. Yeah. So I just I just want to make sure it's extensible, so they they don't yes. they don't just do but static so, stuff, and then they can so they the can provider, change the reconciler. Yeah. Yeah. The provider is code, right? But mm -hmm. given that everything is KRM, I, I, instead of Terraform where you have to write hundred providers or thousand providers, here you only have to write one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's that's already there, right? So in other words, okay. you get every KRM uh, out okay. of the box. Yeah. So we can, if we use that, then we can probably get that for free. Then then we'll we'll have a we'll have a reconciler already running as part of that package, I guess. Yes. Yeah. But so yeah. So, so that's so, the, so, yeah. so so at that point, they would still need to build and push it to Docker Hub and all that stuff, right? So this is still users. So there will be a Hub. there will be a base image in this case. So there's mm -hmm. a base image that you have that you will use, right, mm -hmm. to spin up. So there's mm -hmm. kind of like the same as cross plane works at the end of the day. And then you add your uh, expression file, and it then executes. Okay. 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 And you can tie the expressions. You can basically have yeah. specific, so you can have a delete or a create, and so you basically have multiple. Uh, so it's not one big business logic. It can be multiple. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, well, we'll look at a demo and see how it is. But it seems like this one ties. In the demo, I will not with... show all of that yet. But uh, I, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I well, I mean, if, if this if there needs to be development effort uh, from the SDK team, we should we should also have chipped in to help out. Um, I have some so code that, that does that, but it's not the two mm -hmm. are not tied together yet. Yeah. So because yeah, I was because not... I'll, I'll need this basically generates a a operator um, that would also yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's why I'm yeah. saying is at the moment my f my focus is not really on. This use case, but it's mm -hmm. I think the the let's say framework itself can be leveraged, or it was always in mind to leverage that also. Okay. okay, that's what I'm saying. So if if, if that if are... because we need it for operators, but so if that if you if you check it into an FEO somewhere, then we can probably hopefully someone would be coming in and help out to make sure that it works mm -hmm. from the operator side. Go ahead, Tao. Sorry. Um, yeah, I just uh, want to, <laughs> I posted on the chat. A while ago, I showed a demo of exactly that, right? A single operator, it was Kplug, if you remember it. Uh, mm -hmm. A single operator that you can extend with these plugins, right? Or providers, as, uh, as Wim calls them, right? So they mm -hmm. would contain the business logic. They can be written in any language, and they can be deployed as their own pods, right? Not controllers, remember. Not everything in Kubernetes has to be controllers. <laughs> So it could be just something that sits there and waits for the, the main operator to uh, you know, delegate work to it, right? Mm -hmm. It does the logic and returns the result. Um, mm -hmm. 
or yeah. actually yeah, does gRPC, it. right? I think yeah. in the back end. Uh, yeah, G I use gRPC. I actually mm -hmm. use. There's a pretty nice implementation from HashiCorp that allows gRPC to use locally as well, kind of like DLLs, <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, using sockets, so mm -hmm. you could. If, if you support gRPC in your plugin, you can run it either locally in the same pod or in a separate pod, right, over a network. Mm -hmm. So you can do both, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, it, it, there, we, we have discussed this, and there are actually solutions out there that do this, having one operator for everybody, right? Instead of mm -hmm. everybody, like, we developed a complete operator for Free 5 gc and for OAI, and they're completely different code bases, right? Mm -hmm. But there's so much shared logic, right? So mm -hmm. the idea is that there could be one operator and just delegate certain reconciliation tasks. And they can be very fine-tuned to the kind of work that Nephio does with NFs, right? So they can be really tuned to our uh, CRDs plus the extensions, right? To, to do exactly what needs to be done for those, right? So not something generic, but something very Nephio-centric operator, right? With Nephio-centric plugins. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right for things like uh, uh, multis extensions, for example, mm -hmm. right calculating or generating NADs, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be something very opinionated for Nephio, right, rather than a generic platform. Um, and you know, <laughs> just in the background, there's a, a discussion going on for a long time about VNFMs and saying, "Hey, could Nephio finally be?" <laughs> the product that gives us a GVNFM, right? A generic FN, VN, VNFM where, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's one b base of code and people just insert their own special logic, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so this could be it, <laughs> right? I'm well, being very careful at putting it we, there. When, I, we, when, we, when we started Tacker, we, we had that vision. Actually. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a lot, mm -hmm. very long. When I say long <laughs> conversation, many year conversation. Yeah. Right, and whether that that term even means a lot anymore is another yeah, question. That's true. Uh, point being, we we could do something here that, um, you know, it's a step beyond the uh, uh, what is it called the the runtime. What's the core of uh, op, of the operator SDK? The controller runtime. Controller right? runtime. Yeah. Right. So the controller runtime is kind of like a framework for doing a lot of the internal work for you and just delegating logic, but it's all Go-based, right? The idea is that you provide a reconcile function. And there have been attempts to make that, you know, delegated so you can move it into, say, Python. But at, at the same time, we know that, um, you know, you're still getting the complete reconciliation function. So you still have to flesh out all that business logic. So the point is, can we break it down into things that are even more granular, right? Rather than having, here's a reconciliation function, do it. You still have to do all that business logic for reconciliation, right? So we can divide it into even more, you know, specific uh, 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 aspects that you can delegate, right? So th the technology is there, you know, uh, I show that it's possible. There are a lot of other efforts that show other similar things. Uh, the question is design here, you know, what do we actually delegate, you know, what are those functions, those pieces that that could be implemented with a, a separate script in Python or whatever, right? Um, I think this is a very, very useful approach, right? We're not stopping people from creating an operator by themselves, right? We always yeah. say that FEO SDK is not required. You can go and mm -hmm. write an operator using operator SDK or anything else. And we could I mean, potentially we've done, we've done it in L one and L two basically. Yeah, yeah, but you know we could potentially have some tooling to make that a little bit easier, like dealing with the CRDs and stuff. But I think at the same time we can do something like this, uh, you know, something more. We do all the work, and you just insert the logic, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, when when I say insert the logic, it's not like creating a skeleton code base that you fill in. But, but really just creating a pod that runs and exposes gRPC <laughs> and that's it, <laughs> right? Not having to deal with anything really specific to Kubernetes in terms of creating that business logic. Um, Is it really that important in this first, first go at it to support multiple languages? No, I, 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 I think it's that far to give support to provide the, the, the business logic in Python or in some other language. Would it not be simpler to start off with just go? In this well, first. Uh, whether Go is simpler than Python, <laughs> right? It, or whether it's simpler for us. First of all, we already support Python, right? We have all of OAI written in Python, right? 
Um, I, I think my point is that it's a freebie. It doesn't matter. Any language has a gRPC server. So it doesn't have to be Python. It could be anything. If you can create a gRPC server, uh, then choose whatever language you want. You prefer Ruby, you prefer Java, you can do that as well. Um, it, it's kind of a freebie yeah. created through decoupling, right? Which is one of the powerful aspects of decoupling that I keep talk, <laughs> talking about. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we can provide examples in Python just to be nice, uh, showing in a, in a specific language, but the, the technology itself could work with anything. And if somebody wants to contribute, say, a Java, a uh, little framework uh, to, to make it easier, they can do that too. Uh, but it, it's a good question too, right? That I, I keep raising, how important is support for other languages? In my personal opinion, it should be high priority for us. I think uh, having to use Go to get into Nefio is a blocker. This is something I heard from, from, some, from vendors, right? Um, but yeah, that, 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 that's an issue, I think, separate issue from this technology specifically, but it is worth discussing. It well, it was a blocker when we started. I don't know, tens of thousands of lines later, I guess it's, it turns out it's not much of a blocker. But yeah, I could, I could understand. Obviously, right now we're addressing directly to vendors and then, and then their, their opinion matters um, in this case. Um, I would like to ask someone to take on this uh, so that they can look at Tau and and uh, and and Vim solutions and 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 make it make a make a decision or, or investigate something else to make a decision. This plus the business logic, I, I think they're they're very related. So, anyone interested? So one question I wanted to ask Stephen: <laughs> When we do the operator the TK or the 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 Q builder, uh, it will also generate a dummy T controller, right? Controllers. That's true. That's right. But then, right. well, so yes and no. So you can, yes, if you are, if you, to CLD, you create it. So the first thing you do is create API, right? So if yeah. you create that CLD and you say, I want a controller, then that controller is a reconciler for that CLD. Yeah. So for us, the, the Nephew SDK, at least in one, one major mode of operations, which is somewhat different, is that we already know which um, uh, CL you're going to be watching. Your reconciler is, is going to be against NF deployment. So your the, the, the vendor extension CLD that you're going to create, practically speaking, they have no controllers. So you just so, write code to so process I think yeah. NF deployment is one. For example, mm -hmm. if you're talking about other CLDs, for example, the cluster creation that we talked about. Mm -hmm. So if we, are, if we are going to use this for that also, for example, we may not. For example, we may end up with one mm -hmm. operator. With that, that could be one way. So, so you have you have multiple reconcilers to reconcile. Yes. But then the way we do it right now is the vendor extensions. We're going to put it into config wrap or parameters wrap, uh, yeah. and then and then um, the reconciler of NF deployment parses that and then invoke whatever functions to process them. Uh, we do not. That said, um, the the the. Those resources are in the package, so they were applied. They will be applied to the workload clusters. So if you create controllers which watches them, so so the the, the problem for watching them would be they would not be the the, the watcher the watching controllers of those vendor extension C outs uh, would not necessarily have an association with the NF deployment that comes in. So that's why we want to drive it from NF deployment, uh, and then so you know the reference of the NF deployment. That you 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 you're dealing with, so so for example, if you if you have to take uh, the IP address and VLANs from NF deployment plus the extension stuff uh, for you to generate values.yaml, then then you're driving it from the NF deployment side instead of waking up and then reading the uh, your your own extension CL um, and then and then and then you know fill up some values, but then you have no reference to which NF deployment you're looking at. Um, so. I mean that that's that's one major use case that uh, uh, that that's the reason why we're watching NF deployment. Okay, cool. Thank you. And anyway, so same question. Any volunteers? <laughs> so this person will be responsible for evaluating Vim's and and how solutions, <laughs> and then and then give a uh, recommendations, I guess, to the community. Can we add that as a comment? Maybe in this story okay. we already added that. Yeah. So this and this and the other one that I just filed today, five twelve, okay. are, are things where we'll we'll look at two solutions that are that are provided by community members now, um, and then 
you know, one responsible person will be taking on this to be used for our L3 POC, if you will. Um, well, our POC to L3, if you will. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll add an account there. Yeah. Um, so this is probably the same thing as one. This, this is what I'm hoping anyway, that this is basically the, the, the CLI extensions. That you, if you use CLI and wrap like Operator SDK, um, you will be able to handle vendor extensions. Uh, we just, as we said earlier, we just won't create controllers for the vendor extensions. Um, and then, and then um, we will know those logic needs to be attached to an NF deployment, which is already there, I think, for, uh, for, for specializers. So I think this is, this is the same as, this is basically the same as 501 in terms, 500 in terms of work. Um, uh, package. So I think Vim talk about he has the yeah, so the, the the tool that I am using, Stephen does this also, by the way. So so I I changed, so I learned from Capgen. So the tool, okay. I, so the system or oh, really? the framework that I have can actually okay. be used also for this. Okay. It's multi-purpose. So I designed mm -hmm. it for package generation, okay. specialization, controller runtime, mm -hmm. and even offline. It basically Terra. I it's technically what Terraform does, but uh, okay. only with Kira. And then. So the the options of creating both the operator package and the and the NF package is that is that an option because I'm not just creating one package. Um, I, the, See, when you I'm writing can generate any package any package you want uh, with this tool, right? So the, the business mm -hmm. logic is basically you say I want this KRM and you want transformation. You want to probably need the provider plugin to say mm -hmm. I want to fetch this uh, KRM resources from this right. place. So for that mm -hmm. you might have to. I, for example, if you if you are going outside of uh, KRM, right? So, for example, you say I want to get a resource from Git or something like that. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you have to probably write an own provider to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, the tool itself. Uh, but there's still a second package. package. There's still a second package where the CLD generated uh, um, by by the vendors, the vendor extension CLDs. We'll have to create some vendor CL, the dummy templates, uh, and then and then that becomes part of the NF package. So yes. so that that you can also just execute that basically. So I'm asking. Yeah, you so you can execute. fetch that that CRD and generate uh, something out of that, right? So that's okay. also okay. Okay. I haven't implemented all of that, but mm -hmm. I, so it's fairly straightforward to do those types okay. of things. No, no. Again, we should we whoever takes on that obviously would. Would either wait for them to implement or 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 just go ahead and implement it on top. Um, yeah, the idea is that's, anyone. That's, that's, a, that's an SDK that. needs. Yeah, that's a need for SDK. You know, more than whatever. The you challenge will be to do all of that in R three. Well, I, yeah, that will be a bit. Of yeah. Fun. Well, I mean, if it all depends on this, then then obviously you 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 have to expose your code as early as possible so we can start building on top of it. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, Package, one here. <laughs> I mean, you can leverage. The, the, in other, words, you can link all that together by by saying that as a general story. Do you want to? Do are you taking Vim's tools to do? You know, X, Y, A, B, and Z. All three of these little things that we're doing. Um, or other alternatives, right? I mean, if something. Yeah, and then you can alternative to for any of the A, B, and Z. Yeah. Or all A, B, and Z, you can use an alternative. Um, so, so you know, we'll like to get someone to sign on. Um, and and then the the flux PLC. Um, anyone here? <laughs> I think that's. I, I think Fiacra talked about. Uh, I mean, you haven't done it in terms of the free five GC yet, right? You are you you've done it on um, a test application. Yeah, it was wow. more on a test package. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think we tried the free five GC charts at one point, but I, I'd have to, I'd have to go back over my, over my notes if you like. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So if we can update the issues to see whether or not there's actually issues <laughs> to do this, yeah. Um, yeah. then then we can we can go from there. Um, yeah. So we What's going we to the, the output. Flux? Oh, sorry. Um, sorry. We'll do with something. Uh, uh, flux. 
I, I know the, you know, the, the, the company behind Flux is out of business, but, uh, but then Flux seems to be more matching at this point in terms of generating values that YAML, having the, having the charts on the, um, on, on, on the, on the Git repo and, uh, basically using a CLD to drive what chart they're supposed to read. So those are some of the basic requirements um, that we agree on, I guess, as a community. Um, I think the where Flux... I think where I see Flux Excel is all the hook support of Helm, right? So they are the mm -hmm. only one that have that. All the rest, uh, I think, mm -hmm. have all the Helm stuff, but not the hooks. I think that's I'm not <laughs> sure whether that's correct, but that's my view of the world at the moment. That's what I was told, <laughs> actually. Too, I I I haven't. Well, I mean, the Free Five GC Helm charts are not really having all the other all the hand plugins and things. So I mean I haven't exercised that. Um, and in fact actually the only the only thing I tried was operator SDK, not uh, not Helm, not not Flux. Um, so so the um, so I don't I, yeah, I don't they all have they all have a Helm plugin <laughs> as far as I understand, Steven. So even Config Sync mm -hmm. and Argo, they all have a Helm plugin, but if you go to the Helm books, mm -hmm. that part is uh, is only available in Flux, I think. But I'm not. I'm not sure whether I'm right. But uh... mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, the so the idea you... is we. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go, go ahead. Finish your thoughts. Sir. No, no. So, so, so I'm just saying that the execution of invoking Helm install basically would have to be done by someone, uh, and then that someone yes. uh, needs to be pulling on the Git repo. Needs to. We have to because it's Git repo. We have to somehow able to tell them. This is the chart that we're looking at, and and then able to somehow present them with values that YAML that we generate based on the business logic. Um, so Flux kind of check all those boxes. That's that's all it is for me. I don't, I don't, I don't haven't we haven't I haven't heard in a lot of things in some vendors community that they they want to extensively use the hooks. In a way, we would like to discourage that anyway. Uh, so so I mean that's that's probably not the decision point. Although I I'm open for vendor communities to to give feedback. We do have some internal things that we were doing where a lot of Helm charts actually do use Helm hooks. And okay. it has been one of the stumbling pain points because only Flux supports it and there's no other solution outside of it, at least not yet. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, I mean, again, for a PO, for POC or for our three reference implementation, um, we, and I think Flux checks all the boxes, so we might as well just use Flux. If it helps uh, uh, different vendors' uh, Helm charts, existing Helm charts, to minimize changes, that would that would be a great added bonus. Although, again, I'm, and obviously, Nephew long term would like to encourage you to do all your day two using an operator. So, so Stephen, my question mm -hmm. was: <clears throat> since you said the ViewWorks is going out of business. Uh, what is the yeah. repercussions of that? Is it will, it will Flux continue to live on in the community? Will it, uh, so we will. We'll, so our three, like like anything else we've done, is using Flux would be just a reference. The uh, the we the operator SDK or Nephew operator framework. Let's put it even more. How onboarding for 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 Nephew will not make Flux a requirement, no matter what we do as a reference for implementations. So so if the idea is, I remember two meetings ago. Um, the community to agree on uh, the execution engine, which is what I call this so far in terms of exit term. The Helm chart execution engine uh, is something where um, you have to encode in your package by saying that I have a dependencies on that. Uh, and then NF to infra dependencies controller or whatever they call them <laughs> would be, would be dyna dynamically fetch that and install it into workload cluster. So this piece is not a required piece for Helm onboarding. We, what we do require uh, is uh, how we we do at least recommend to users that the Helm charts to be um, copy and loaded onto a Git repo that is accessible by the workload clusters, and uh, we'll have a nephew CL, if you will, um, that would that will allow you to encode uh, the location of the repos and and the, the chart and the revision of the chart and so on. So so those those things are what we will probably mandate, but then not the execution engine. So if you replace Flux with, for instance, Helm directly, uh, plus you know something that that, that fetch from Gig, uh, that would be that would be fine. A controller that does like Helm on the back end and also use like a Gig a Gig fetch and Gig uh, clone or whatever, um, that would be okay. 
So, so, so that you know, flux is not a requirement. So, but then for this POC, it seems to check all the boxes. It probably is a good thing to use, just okay. to expedite the process. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that will never be a requirement. We don't want to mandate people to use a particular uh, Helm engine. So I'm, I'm guessing this sort of is Fiacre, <laughs> since it's been working on that. Fiacre, yeah, this is the thing. If you is start it, is it okay with it, you, you own it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> using Helm to see if we can deploy this with IGC. And then if it, if you can, uh, uh, please please like publish the config map. So this would become the things that we want to do uh, in terms of generating the values at YAML. Yeah, we can have a look, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. So this is generating the 35GC operators using SDK. Um, that should be the, the, the whoever is doing this. Um, by the time you know, Fiacra is done with the 35GC onboarding using, using Flux, if it's doable. Um, by the time the, the idea is, by the time we get to this, whoever is doing this is just writing the mapping and then finished. And then, and then generating some packages. So it should be very simple work. Um, and, and I'll probably take it myself then, <laughs> if there's anything. Um, so I, I, I do want to see if, this is more like integration work at the end to make sure that you can I can take the free 5 GC home charts uh, and run it through the, the integrated Matthew SDK and, 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 and it generates the, um, the operator and the NF package. For um, for free five GC, so I can I can do that. That I can do if if it's really as easy as it is, <laughs> and and I could critique whether that is as easy as it is, um, and then recommend improvements as we go. Uh, this I dump it into non L three, so forget it. If we see a use case, that would be great um, to think about how to add that. Um, I don't think we've seen it yet at this point. Um, and then as we said, the last one. And are pretty much similar to the other ones. So A, B, and C is the reconciler, uh, um, the package generations, and the business logic. So, so the idea is uh, right now, so far, what Vim told us is he, he has the tools that may be able to satisfy all three uh, with additional extensions and additions uh, to the tools. Um, so uh, you, we can have three different people looking at this three different areas and come back and see. Uh, recommend that maybe Vim's tools can do them or not, um, uh, but then you know. But if not, then you know. If everyone said, "Yeah, let's use Vim's," then then Vim's tools plus whatever we have to develop as the SDK team uh, would be able to satisfy all three of those. Yeah, go ahead, Baba. Yeah, uh, sorry, maybe a very basic question, um, maybe very naive also. Sorry, in the previous one, the pre five GC operator by SDK. Mm -hmm. The way I understand is obviously we start with enough deployment, start with enough deployment, uh, CR. In general, I'm talking about how we work today. Yeah. And then uh, we it goes through the specialization pipeline mm -hmm. and it creates a CR into the workload cluster repo. Yeah. And then that cluster. So, so, so me, me as a human who understands the free five GC home charts, which I don't, but then you know, it's there, <laughs> uh, would come in and say, oh, enough deployment is this. Uh, in order for me to generate the values that YAML for my free five GC, all the NFs actually, uh, I need uh, all, all individual NFs, so UPF, SMF, and 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 um, and AMF. Um, I need this additional things. So those things becomes so I define those structures uh, through this nephew SDK. So so now the CLDs for this extension structures plus the dummy C out that will be generated out of those uh, are, are created. Um, and then I go into some sort of tools and tell me I'm mapping NF deployment uh, interface, IPv6, even IPv4 address to my values.yaml, blah, blah, blah. I don't, I don't, I don't actually worry. I think and I think maybe PFCP, blah, some N4 uh, things. And then, and then I map it into that values.yaml field and then it generates the business logic, whatever form it is. Um, and, then, and then I push that in and then I say, hey, I have, I have this in my Docker Hub now. Uh, so let's encode that into a deployment uh, object. So it generates a operator package that would includes both all the extension CLDs 
which version of NF deployment I, I'm going to use, and pointing to this operator image uh, in some sort of registry as a path. Um, and then it also generates the second package, which contains the uh, free 5 gc um, extension cout, the NF deployment cout. And I would think that would pretty much be it. Um, and, then, and then I can load the first one to make sure that our operator comes up. And then I can load the second one to deploy whatever NF I want to deploy. So that's the, that's the I, should, I should only do those. And then if I have to do a lot more, then, then, then we have to sort of evaluate how it goes. OK, OK. So, uh, so basically, you're taking the Helm charts and. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. And I'm, I'm also responsible to just load the Helm charts into a gig repo uh, and then, and then, and then um, specify that as part of the input, I guess, um, by, on the deployment that I'm, I'm using this particular Helm charts. OK, OK. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But then, and by then, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have to bring up flux. I shouldn't have to do. I. I shouldn't have. I have to bring up operators by loading the package. But I don't have to like bring it up physically. I don't have to apply the deployment. Um, and and then and then the someone will have to tell me this is working. Uh, um, and oh, one logic that isn't there yet. Um, the the status field. Um, so if we if we use all this business logic, is there some way to encode? how we fill out the status. And that's actually a question for them. Yes, yeah, you can uh, also specify that, right? OK. If that's the only piece that has the right code, that's, that's also OK. We just want to know. That doesn't seem very trivial, actually, to specify an expressive language. I mean, you uh, based on what you get, based on an event that you get, uh, you mm -hmm. update it, right? Well, so the the, uh, the the devil is always in the detail, of course, right? But yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. So, so free five G C is simple. Yeah. That's the part coming up great. Uh, but then yeah. the uh, uh, I'm guessing all of, uh, we have vendor community here. So the vendors will be coming in, and they have what eight parts, six parts, ten parts to make up one UPF. Uh, it will, uh, and then and then they they probably will be able to internally ensure that communication is happening. Uh, um, the the basic configuration has been applied, um, and then and then all the Connectivities and things are done, so I think I think that piece of logic probably is. Yeah, so good. so that's a different. So so you have to be you have to split that. I you have to look at at it uh, from a different. I we have to look at all the different use cases. Yes. I think when yeah. you go into, I would say more of this closed loop type of stuff, right? Which I call mm -hmm. right. You mm -hmm. probably might have to write some code uh, yeah. there, right? So that's where I think. So you and mm -hmm. you have to split it up. But for example, what I'm doing a lot. Uh, these days is uh, I myself is that I split the, the reconciler into pieces, right? So you, for example, mm -hmm. have I because you can attach multiple reconcilers to the same object, right? Each doing a specific thing. So for example, mm -hmm. what I'm typically doing, I I mean, and it's up for discussion is one is basically creating all the artifacts that are depending on you, right? For example, in this case, the Helm chart, right? But mm -hmm. there could be additional ones, right? And there is another one that basically says, okay, it looks at the statuses of all of these things. And he is basically responsible for updating specific status objects within that same CR. It doesn't have to be one re big reconciliation loop. You can split mm -hmm. them up into pieces as long as you basically uh, ensure that you segment who is taking care of what. Hmm. Well, you see? Usually, usually we want. I mean, best practice, I guess. We want we want only one operators per clusters to be to own a particular uh, resource. Um, but anyway, yes. But so <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that, uh -huh. I, for example, I mean, many people can watch, but then own, ownership, pretty much, we want to we want to kind of narrow it down to one, um, precisely for the yeah, reason. We, we have to look into the details. But what I'm trying to say is, if you really do service assurance type of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You somehow, I, for example, updating a replica set to say I need five pots and stuff like that, that's easy, right? Mm -hmm. That's easy peasy. Yeah. The, the question, because then you basically say, okay, I need five pots. I just uh, read the status and you update a field, right? So that's easy. Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to get to is if it's really more complicated logic, uh, uh, then you have to see whether uh, you don't have to write code at the, at some point, right? So the there's a limit to this uh, expression stuff. Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. That's, that's what I'm saying. The status field seems like 
at least for L3 is in as a code. That, that needs to be added. No status can be so so like really saying uh, whether it worked or didn't work, right? So that you can easily update because at the end of the day you execute uh actually you execute a DAG, right? So that's how the thing works. So you execute a DAG under the hood, and mm -hmm. depending on where you get, you can already get an error code uh, from it to see whether you succeeded or not, right? So we basically update the status of the ready condition. So that's kind of out of the box that you get for it. Mm -hmm. And then you can basically say, as when you uh, succeed or didn't succeed, you can, for example, determine a list and say how many entries based on how many pops you have, and then you update an entry into that. So that's it's also easy. And just, I, there might be scenarios where it becomes more complicated is what I'm trying to say, where mm -hmm. potentially real code is needed. Uh, and yeah. yeah, but we have to, that's, that's, we will find that out based on experimentation. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. We'll see how it goes. I mean, our status may change too because of SAA requirements. Who knows? But let's see how it goes. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that's pretty much it uh, for. I mean, again, offline. Hopefully, uh, folks can warrant here those three major items that we we have to evaluate based on Tao and and Vim's uh, demos and suggestions. Um, we would. I, I definitely would like someone to take a look. Um, Stephen, I mean, if you, if it's not already there, probably can you also add the link to your the the document that you presented, right? Oh yeah, this, yeah, yeah. This epic, yeah. I can link so it that, to you know somebody the, can the epic, go to this yeah. place and then see the documentation, understand the whole thing, end to end thing. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So thank you. So well, it's on time. And then next week, uh, as we said, the, the the agenda would definitely be just talent wins uh, demos. And see how it fits into these three particular use cases. Cool. Cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. One minute over. So if there's nothing else, so uh, have a good day. Have a good one. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you.